In the last lesson you saw that manipulators snap to certain locations when you drag them. And in this lesson you'll learn how to customize the snap. You'll also learn how to customize the mini toolbar. If you applied the extrusion command from the last lesson, delete the extrusion but keep the sketch. Otherwise cancel the operation by typing the escape key. By the way, as you know, typing the escape key terminates almost any command. And you'll find that you use the escape key quite often. So I use a five button mouse which has a standard three button mouse with two thumb buttons. And I program one of the thumb buttons to evoke the escape key. If you do this you'll find that it will help speed up your work. Now I want to show you the settings that control the incremental steps that occur when you use the manipulators. Click the tools tab. As you know the application option settings control the inventor program. We want to change the setting that controls the incremental steps in the mini toolbar so you might expect the setting to be in the application options, but it's actually in the document settings. If you can't find a setting in the application options, look in the document settings. The difference between the application options and the document settings is document settings only controls the current document. So the setting you are about to set only controls this document. If you want to control the settings on all documents, you need to create a template, which is covered in detail in the course. Open the document settings and then click the modeling tab. In the 3D snap spacing section you can see that the distance snap is set to a sixteenth of an inch and the angle is five degrees. As I said the default settings in this dialog box are controlled by the template file that created the file. So if you change these values it only affects this document. You have to modify the template or create a new one in order to change the default values. Now let's take a closer look at the mini toolbar. Close this dialog box. Click the model tab and then evoke the extrude command. When you move your pointer away from the toolbar the settings fade and when you move your pointer back they reappear. This is called auto fade. Personally I don't like settings fading in and out so I turn this feature off. To do this click the down arrow on options and then uncheck the auto fade option. Now the settings are on no matter where your pointer is. Another thing you may consider is pinning the toolbar to a specific location. Since you only use the mini toolbar on some of the commands, you might consider pinning it to the upper left corner of the graphics area. This way the command settings for all the commands are performed in a single location. If you want to try using this method, open the options list and then check the pin mini toolbar position option. Now drag the toolbar to the top left corner of the graphics area. When the mini toolbar is pinned like this, it will be at this location for any command that uses it. So you don't have to move it for every command. The benefit of having the toolbar in the upper left corner is anytime you evoke a command, you know to go to the upper left corner to set the settings for the command. This applies to commands that use the mini toolbar and commands that don't. Now you're going to learn about the marking menu and how it works in conjunction with the mini toolbar. The marking menu is designed to reduce mouse movement and having the mini toolbar pinned to the top left corner conflicts with this concept. So let's unpin it. Click the options drop down menu and then uncheck the pin option. You have to exit the command for this to take effect so type the escape key and then open the extrude command again. Now the toolbar will follow your pointer when you adjust manipulators. Now let's talk about the marking menu. Exit the command by typing the escape key and then right click in the graphics area. This is the marking menu. Actually the command surrounding the pointer is the marking menu and the context menu is below it. There are two ways to use the marking menu. You can select commands from the menu or you can use mouse gestures. So if you select the extrude command for example, the command will open. Now I'm going to select the command using mouse gestures, but before I do I want you to notice that the extrude command is up and to the right of my pointer. By the way, to close the menu, click in the center of the commands. A mouse gesture is a right drag in the direction of the command. You just saw that the extrude command is up and to the right at a 45 degree angle. So if you right drag in this direction, you'll evoke the command. To do this, press and hold your right mouse button down while you move your pointer up and to the right. This method is so fast that I'm going to use the click method when I evoke commands so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. What I want you to do is practice using mouse gestures to evoke commands. 
This way you can see the location of the command in the lesson so you'll know which direction to make your mouse gestures. After a little practice you'll automatically know where the commands are. I'll do a mouse gesture one last time to show you the workflow of dynamically applying commands and then from this point on I'll use the click method. When you apply a mouse gesture the command opens and the value input box is focused ready for input. So the next step is to either type the value or drag a manipulator. I prefer typing the value so I'll enter one inch. If you want to give it draft type the tab key and then enter the angle. To apply the command you can type the enter key, click OK or perform another mouse gesture. If you right click at this time you can see that you can apply the command by making a mouse gesture to the right. You can also cancel the command by making a mouse gesture to the left. So this is what the workflow of drawing a one inch pen would look like using mouse gestures. Now you can see why I'll use the click method so you can clearly see what I'm doing while you try to use mouse gestures. Mouse gestures are fast but that doesn't mean you have to use them. You should use the interface method that best suits you. Now we're going to take a closer look at the marking menu and you'll learn how to customize it. If the extrude command is open, type the escape key to close it. And if you created the extrusion, delete it but don't delete the sketch. When you're finished you should be in the part modeling environment and sketch 1 should be visible in the graphics area. Now let's look at the commands in the marking menu. Right click in the graphics area. As you become more familiar with the commands and the methods of evoking them, you might want to change some of the commands in this menu. But this takes a little more thought than you might expect. For one thing the marking menu is driven by the environment. This is the marking menu in the part modeling environment and for now I just want you to notice that it has a fillet command, an extrude command, and a revolve command. Now close the menu by right or left clicking in the center. Open sketch 1 by double clicking it and then right click in the graphics area. As you can see this menu is different. In fact every environment has a different menu. If you look at the top of the menu you can see that it evokes the line command. You also know that typing the L key on your keyboard evokes the command. So you can use the line command in the ribbon which is slow. You can type the L key which is fast and you can use a vertical mouse gesture which is also fast. Which method you use will drive the customization of this menu. For example if you feel more comfortable using the L key to evoke the command you might want to replace this command with another command. I use the line command to demonstrate this point because I've already shown you that you can type the L key to evoke the command. As you become more familiar with inventors commands you'll know more about how to customize the menus and the more you know the more complicated it gets. For example in the 2D drafting and customization course you learn how to set up custom keyboard commands. So you'll be able to customize keyboard commands and marking menu commands. The reason I'm telling you this now is so that you can practice using different methods of evoking commands to determine which method is comfortable for you to use. So during the course when I evoke a command, you might try using different methods of evoking the command. Learn the method that suits you best and use that method. You'll get a detailed description of customizing the marking menu in the 2D drafting and customization course. So for now I'll just give you a quick introduction. Close the menu and then click the tools tab and select the customize command. Now click the marking menu tab. This is where you customize the menu and since the dialog box was open when the 2D sketch environment was active, the environment is set to 2D sketch. You can customize the menu in a different environment by changing this combo box. Environments that have sub environments can also be customized. To change a command, select it Type a keyword to search for the command and then select the new command. For now I want you to leave the command set to their defaults and as I said, as you proceed through the course you'll have a better understanding of how to customize them. So close the dialog box. The main thing I want you to take from this lesson is the need for you to explore different methods of evoking commands to figure out which method you prefer. You already know that you're going to perform mouse gestures while I click commands, so you're not locked into using the method you see on the screen. I also want you to try using keyboard commands because keyboard commands are fast and easy to use. Before you continue to the next lesson, extrude the profile one inch.
Once you've done that, set the view normal to the end of the pin. Click the view face command and then select the face on the end. In the last lesson you extruded the cylinder. The length of the cylinder is 1 inch and the diameter is 94 thousandths of an inch. In this lesson you'll change the diameter to 1 eighth of an inch. Set the view to the home view so that you can see your changes while you make them. One method of doing this is to right click while your pointer is in the graphics area and then select home view. Also notice that you can type F6 to change the view to the home view. Now right click on the extrusion in the browser and select edit sketch. By now you might be wondering if this is called a sketch or a profile. It's called a profile and it's called a sketch. But there is a difference between sketches and profiles. The difference can't be demonstrated with a single circle so I won't try to explain it now. The lesson on sketches versus profiles will answer any question you may have. Now it's time to change the dimension. We're not in general dimension mode but you can change the dimension when you're not in the general dimension mode by double clicking it. Double click the dimension and then enter 125 thousandths of an inch in the window. Type the enter key and then finish the sketch. Now the pin has been updated to the new diameter. You've used a few of the commands in the navigation bar and the view cube and in the next lesson you'll explore these commands in detail. Before you continue to the next lesson, save the file. Click the save command in the title bar. Since the current project is the accelerated productivity project, the folder is automatically open. Name the part pin and then click the save button.